Do you want some Turkish delight? Oh. Shall we see if we can eat all of that over the course of this episode? Very lovely customer of mine brought me that. What is Turkish delight? Is it a marzipan? Turkish. So welcome to another lockdown edition of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Never filmed on a Tuesday. Today's topic, shoes, which has been asked for a lot. Which are the best cycling shoes? What is a shoe? It's quite apparent that you don't know what a shoe is, seeing as you aren't wearing any. Yeah. Cycling shoes, or shoes, they go on your feet. A cycling shoe has a very specific and unique requirement um, in comparison to any other shoe in that it has a mechanical function by way of having a cleat adhered to it. One second. Uh, can't be dealing with that. The sole should be stiff, and you know the, the, the soles are generally made up of either a, a carbon fiber or usually a plastic or a carbon reinforced plastic. There are a varying degree of different uppers available, different materials of upper, and there are a million and one different closures. Why do they need to be stiff? Why do they need to be stiff? Because it's gonna stabilize and support your foot. If you are, if you think about the size of a pedal, cycling pedal, it's quite a small surface area compared to the size of one's foot. So it, if it, the stiffness enables you to drive a little bit more power, it also helps stabilize the foot. So that's the predominant reason why you want it to be stiff. There are some budget shoes out there, I will remain anonymous, um, that you can pretty much fold in half. Uh, this, it's important to understand, is the single most important part of your equipment. It's more important than your bike. It's more important than those carbon wheels that you're looking at eyeing up. This is where all the power goes, or doesn't, as the case usually is. I think the single most important consideration to be made about a shoe is that it fits. A shoe is only as good as how well it fits you. So you could have, in my opinion, the best shoe on the planet, like CX403, but this shoe doesn't fit everyone. Yeah? If you've got really super, super skinny feet, not going to fit you. The shoe really has to fit. You've got to look and assess and understand the foot and the needs of the foot. And most people have two feet. Both of those feet are different. Most people have different size foot, one foot pronates more than the other, which is the act of the ankle joint rolling in, some people supinate. There are a million and one considerations to be taken in, uh, to be made when sizing for a shoe. That kicks things off. The fit is absolutely, categorically, the single most important thing. And when you're buying shoes, uh, it's important to buy shoes from someone who understands feet. Don't walk into a shop and go, oh, can I try these on in a size 10? Because you're not size 10, you're probably an eight with wide feet and you've been wearing shoes too large for all, your, all those years. That's the single most common blunder that I, that I encounter with people riding shoes, is they, they go and they buy something Italian because they like the look of it and they've got big fat duck feet because they've sat at a desk the entire du their, their entire life and then they go up a size or two to accommodate the width of the foot the cleat location ends up too far forward, you get knee pain or saddle problems or foot issues or you know, a plethora of different ailments that we commonly associate with, with riding a bicycle. If you don't have the means to have a bike fit, how can you find a shoe that fits you? Well, we are actually sending quite a lot of shoes out. Uh, I don't sell shoes online uh, because I don't like the concept of it, but we are sending quite a lot of shoes abroad these days with riders are emailing us the dimensions of their feet. So you draw around the outside of your foot, give, uh, measure the widest part, measure the longest part, send us a picture of your feet and we'll give you a pretty good guesstimate or understanding of which shoe is going to work for you. I'm only providing that to people who are buying shoes for me. I'm not here to just give you free advice for the whole time. We do enough of that on YouTube. But if you're looking to buy a pair of shoes from us, we'll, we'll, we'll aim to get the best shoe for you just to do it, you just by saying it remotely. One way of doing it might be to look at your feet for a start. It would be the, the, the first starting point. Have you got wide feet? Have you got narrow feet? Uh, do you have bunions? This kind of stuff. Uh, generally having an, a bit of an understanding of, of what your feet look like will give you a, a relatively good understanding of which shoe should, you should be buying. So quite often, we, for example, I get people who come in here, they've got really skinny feet, they've got a wide-fitting shoe to uh, solve issues like pain on the outside of the foot, which, to be honest with you, is driven by lack of arch support, cleat location, pedal system, uh, listing to one side as a result, saddle being too high. There are a million and one causes for you getting pain on the outside of your feet and it's almost never to do with the fit of the shoe. I guess one way of determining if it's the fit of the shoe is, does that pain 
come about over time or does it come on straight away? If it comes on straight away, it's the shoe. If it doesn't and it builds over time, it's something else entirely. It's important to have a look at your, have a look at your feet, have an understanding of your feet, um, and you know, then start looking at shoes that uh, work best for that foot type. So slender feet, uh, generally we tend to put people into a city, uh, there are certain models of Lake, CX332 for example, that work really well with the slender feet. Um, Giro, I quite like the Empire, but not the, um, not the knitted ones. Those are generally the only shoes actually I tend to put people into if, uh, if they've got narrow feet. Far more common is, is a wide foot. The best selling shoe we sell out of here is a Lake CX238. Uh, by by a very very long way, and equally there are there are wide fitting options. Shimano, for example, um, does the S fire in a wide fitting that and a standard fit. This is the wide fitting yeah. one. Um, they do a wide fit and a standard option. You've got to think about it rationally and logically. If you haven't got wide feet and you're buying a wide fitting shoe, mm, something's not quite right. All of the shoes that we've got here are quite a modern sort of fastening system. None of them are laces. They're all, they're all boas or a type of boa thing. What are the benefits of having that over laces? I mean, you can undo these in a race situation pretty quickly, which is nice. I quite like that. Um, but there are lots of people riding laced shoes. I think you know, the, the, the lace-up shoe is a bit of a fashionista thing. I mean, I, there, there is a... You do a, it does allow a nice spread of, of pressure over the top of the foot. Uh, however, it lacks any on the bike adjustment, I guess is the biggest problem with it. Uh, I have a pair of lace-up shoes. I, I, I do wear them occasionally, but I wouldn't ride, wear them for a long ride. The boa closure that came about, I don't know, 15 years ago, is generally the, the, the most widespread the, the, the most widespread clothes that you see in kind of mid to high end shoes. Uh, City has its own proprietary system, which is fiddlier, but you know there's, there isn't really any difference in terms of stability. Uh, the new bowers that you're getting on on both of the, the, the both this Shimano and this Lake are, are two way quick release um, and allow you to adjust them on the fly, which is a really great feature. It allows a decent spread of pressure over the top of the foot, and they're quick and easy to use and quick and easy to get off. Uh, so, and, and you know, I, so I don't, I don't really have a preference. I think, I think the uh, a Velcro closure can put pressure points on top of the foot, particularly if the the rider's over tightening the closure system. But uh, for the most part, the boa seems to be the most stable, the most secure, the most adjustable, on particularly on the fly. So, but you know, at the same time, if you've got Stable feet, I can't see a huge issue with, uh, with lace-ups. Once again, all of the shoes here have carbon soles because they're fairly high-end shoes. Um, is that something you recommend? Yep. I, I don't even sell shoes that don't have carbon soles. The reason for it is, it, it, it's to a certain degree it's the stiffness, but furthermore, uh, a plastic soled shoe has to be comparatively a lot, lot thicker in order to get any form of stiffness. Now, what that means is that as you pass through the top of the stroke, it uh, has the same impact as lengthening the crack. It, 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 impin it impinges the hips. So the benefit of a carbon fiber sole is that it's comparatively thinner and it aids you getting through the top of the stroke. Furthermore, it does have a lot more stiffness and uh, it doesn't fatigue in the same rate. A plastic sole shoe will tend to get soft really quite quickly. Uh, so, and thus it, the, the amount of support that it provides diminishes over time. Carbon sole goes on forever. Carbon is a non-fatiguing material. I think the other thing whilst we're on the subject of soles is to understand that the cleat location on shoes varies from brand to brand. So there are certain brands, certain Italian brands out there that have a much more forward cleat location uh, that I have a bit of a disliking for on the grounds that they, there's quite a strong correlation between a forward cleat lo location and foot problems, knee pain, saddle issues. Uh, so we find ourselves taking the cleat further and further back, but that's just one consideration. And again, whether it's right or wrong for you really depends on your arch length, for example. So when we're talking arch length, we're talking about the distance from the calcaneus, which is your heel bone, to the first metatarsals, your longitudinal arch. Uh, a rider with a longer longitudinal arch potentially won't be so heavily influenced by a clear location is too far forward. All right. So that's the material of the sole. What about the uppers? What about knitter shoes and the difference between material like this, leather, 
something be you. micro something yeah I mean I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that there's uh, a best uh, I mean uh, quite a lot of manufacturers these days are using a PU or a, or a microfiber it's like a synthetic material this is this is a kangaroo hide um, shoe but they it does also come in a synthetics with their custom program something worth considering about these uh, you can get custom ones but you know I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that there's a there was a better or a worse uh, I am not a fan of knitted and woven fabrics on the grounds that they tend to be quite soft so that's they don't really offer a huge amount of support and stability to the foot and then when that's compounded by the fact that the, that the brands that use these uppers tend to be narrower fitting they then usually have people with two sizes too large so actually you end up with this composition of a shoe that is too big too narrow and then it's got an unstable upper and then all hell breaks loose you know people have you know instability in their feet which results in all sorts of pain i'm not saying don't buy shoes with woven or uh, knitted uppers i just don't think it's a particularly stable material uh, to be making cycling shoes out of so if you had to choose top five shoe brands that people want to be looking at everybody know that watches these videos knows that i have a big like liking for lake on the grounds that they offer several different fits they only make shoes same with city city only makes footwear shimano make really great shoes i quite like giros as well uh, I, I i i was going to stock giro but they stopped making the, the the models that i wanted to be stocking in here so oh, i'm just not going to bother because they they i don't believe in the uh, the upper materials that they started using that's four what's the fifth i mean there are other brands like dmt they don't make bad shoes i think it's probably important to talk about specialized i'm starting to come up against a problem with specialized shoes um, and I think the, the reason for it is that uh, they have, it's the only non-neutral shoe on the market. And this is something that nobody tells you when, and when they do tell you, they make it sound like it's a good thing. The Specialized shoe is the only shoe on the market that has immediately posted forfeit varus built into the shoe. So in English, the front of the shoe is canted like this, okay? So the medial or the first, the, the, the ball of your foot is angled like so. This is built on the assumption that uh, all human beings have a forefoot varus. Um, this is starting to get quite technical, but a forefoot varus is a skeletally fixed elevation of the first ribs, the first line of bones. And what it leads to is usually excessive pronation. So as you drive, as you uh, apply pressure to the foot, the, um, it leads to excessive pronation of the foot. There is a problem with this. Four foot varus is extremely rare. Most people possess what's called a four foot, four foot supernatus, which is a soft tissue elevation which can be manipulated. And what this leads to is with the four foot varus posting, it, it can often lead to uh, foot issues. Uh, we've, we've also found it um, potentially leading to knee pain as well. Now, I'm not going to say that specialized shoes cause knee pain because they don't, but I don't like the fact that it's a non-neutral system. I would prefer to build that support into the shoe. Um, for some people, it absolutely categorically works, but I'm starting to find for you know quite a lot of people that it's it's not what they want. And I, I found this literally by, from, from comparative testing. You take someone out of the specialized shoe, put them into a neutral shoe, be it a lake, a Giro, or, or a city, and they automatically prefer it. Furthermore, if someone has a neutral shoe and we add a four foot varus posting, I can think of two scenarios in the last two years where this is, I've gotten this to work. Almost everybody doesn't like it in their feet, in their shoes. They, they, they don't like it in their shoes because they feel as though it's just, it, it's putting excessive pressure through the ball of the foot. That is, that is my one concern with the specialized shoe. Other than that, clean location is fantastic. The upper is really good. It's, you know, it's a well engineered shoe. It's such a nice shoe, shoe otherwise, It's right? a great shoe. Uh, I mean, I find myself when riders don't want to buy new shoes, um, then I find myself neutralizing it a lot of the time. So I'll put a, a Varus four foot wedge in, in, a, in a Valgus um, plane, and that neutralizes the front of the shoe, but it doesn't always work. Um, I think I, I would rather leave, leave um, correcting the feet or um, optimizing the feet to, to your bike fitter rather than a shoe manufacturer. So there you go, another episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. If you have any questions relating to any of these topics or suggestions for future videos, put them in a the link down below. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to film stuff over the next few weeks, we're just sort of batch doing it at the moment. Please check out that link down below to James's shop. 
if you want to buy anything from the online store, they're still posting things out. And yeah, words. Word.